Hi folks, we just made about 300 of these turned pieces of all thread. Let's show how we did it using the Tormach Conversational, some tweaks that we've made. Uh, we've also made some upgrades to the lathe itself. So let's start with the actual machining footage. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. It just finished apart, so I'm gonna open up my collet, pull my material out, and it's gonna touch the end of that parting tool, which is in an intentional place. We're gonna try this without coolant. We'll see how it goes. So cycle start. You see the parting tool moved to the outside. Now this is very precarious, I will readily admit. You do have a lot of material sticking out. We're turning a very slow RPM. We, in all of our 300 parts, did not have a single one whip on us, so I'm okay with that. So it parts it off, switches to a facing, or turning facing tool. Faces, cleans up. Turns, clean up pass on the OD. Should now chamfer the ends, just a hair. Switch to a grooving tool. This is for the E-clip. And then comes all the way out. Switches to that parting tool and goes into place. So now I think we might be at the end of the all thread. Nope, we're okay. Actually, we might be right at the end. Okay, yeah, that one all cut off by hand, but you guys get the idea that we're now parting tools in place, as you saw at the beginning of the footage, to start the operation over again. The code was actually really easy. The Tormach Pathpilot Conversational just crushes this stuff. First thing we did was we created the parting code, and I'll hop into the code here and we ran that first in this section here. So if you see here, there's John pasted below and above. I like commenting when you patch code in like this. We wanted to run this first to get it nailed down before we worried about the rest of the part because this is where you've got that whole length of material sticking out. You've got whip concerns. You wanna run it at a slower feed rate. So, and you've got clearance concerns with the tool and the turret. So we're going out to 6.4 clearance and we're actually parting at positive 0.04. You can see my note here, that way we can adjust this if we have a tolerance issue. And then back in the conversational, I'm not gonna go through it all, but we just did a face, OD turn, chamfer, and then we did a groove with that new grooving tool from Shars. I'll put a link in the video description to make the E-ring uh, clip groove. And, and then at the very end, we just programmed the spindle. Uh, I actually don't think I put this, um, in as, as a commented line, but it switches to our parting tool, T5, and then it goes to G0 6.2 X0, and you'll notice when you close the 5C collet, it'll pull back the piece, uh, you know, a little bit, maybe 20, 30, 50 thou, but it, usually that's actually pretty consistent, so you can adjust how far out this goes. This is sort of your tool setter or your, or your workpiece setting distance, um, and it's pretty freaking repeatable. There isn't a crazy overall length requirement anyways on this part. We just switched the lathe um, and actually all of our coolant over to Quali Chem. You can see that white stuff in there. Everybody seems to be using it. Um, I got it from John Grimsmo. I think he got it from somebody else. It's actually not that expensive. We bought a five gallon buck, uh, bucket uh, for about 175 bucks shipped. It mixes though down, I don't know, 20 to one. Um, everyone calls it Quali Chem, but it's actually Extreme Cut 251C. Um, if you guys want to know more about that, let us know. You, got, you can email us or comment us below. We rigged up the Tormach manifold right here for our gang tooling positions. And for now, we're just using uh, the ball valves outside the machine to control whether the coolant goes to the turret or to the gang. But stay tuned. I've got an idea on making that even better. We just added some check valves here. 
So that prevents the coolant from backflowing when it turns off, which really helps because if you've used this lathe, you'll notice sometimes that the coolant takes a second to turn on. That's really just priming back in. This solves that issue. And folks, I gotta say, we've been running now a couple thousand parts for the various projects, including the DIY clamp, and this thing is crushing it. It is holding very good tolerances. Um, as an update on the clamp project, we are continuing to bang away. We've got a lot of the parts and subassemblies done and getting organized over there. The delay is actually going to be the powder coating. I don't think I'm going to have those back until the end of February. So for folks that were emailing asking on ship dates, we should be able to start shipping stuff early March. Um, again, just waiting for powder coat and then assembly. Jared added some rubber both along here and underneath here. Just helps the coolant splash. Um, more so just for cleanliness than it is anything else. And the only other last thing is we've switched. We've added a um, left hand and a right hand VNMG tool. That lets us turn on the back side. We added that grooving tool. Actually, let me pull that up. We added that Char's grooving tool, which does a great job um, of adding that E-clip groove. And we've really got our turret tooling locked down. We're really happy with that. We maybe change one tool in and out, and then we can add our spot drill taps down here in the gang. So super happy with this. E-clip fits on. I think it's a pretty good fit. Ow, it kind of hurts to push it on. And that works just like so. Uh, what could we be doing better? We, um, I would like to experiment with right and left hand parting tools. Right now we're using a neutral tool and hopefully get rid of a burr on that, uh, or that nub left on the back side. May not be possible. Not a big deal to hit it with the belt sander, but obviously, um, you know, things change when you do larger quantities, so you want to try to be smart about it. We're buying this all thread in 12 foot lengths for $5.75 a stick, so that is cheap, cheap, cheap. So having a machine like the Tormach that can handle it in quantities, um, we don't have a bar feeder, so, but absent having a bar feeder, I think we're being pretty smart uh, about running this stuff. Would love to hear suggestions or improvements in the comments below, um, but we're having fun and hopefully we'll get this clamp project uh, wrapped up and uh, shipped out to folks. Hope you enjoyed that Wednesday widget, folks. Take care. See you next week.